When the school starts up. Uh, school starts back in one week. Sunday. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to. I, I'm, I can't forget. <laughs> Psych! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of How Did We Get Here? How Did We Get Here? Is the show better than your average? Is the channel and the movement? Two brothers, two cousins. I got to get my intro. Anyway, two cousins like brothers talking any and everything in the process. I'm your host, Jay Carter. We got my man that's always heard and never seen, Skeens. What up? A.K.A. Dr. Claw. A.K.A. Dr. Claw. A.K.A. Osama Bin Laden, where you never find him. A.K.A. Dr. Dre's uh, The Chronic Chronic Album. album. (laughs) You're never going to hear it. You hear him, but you'll never see it. So anyway, welcome back, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Appreciate y'all rocking with us as usual. We got another great show for you guys. We're going to talk a little this, a little that. Love, peace, and blessings to you and your family. Hope everybody is safe and healthy. But um, let's get into it, man. Um, me and Skeens were talking. And I want to get right to the nitty gritty. And y'all be honest with us. You know, I got to shoot my shot. Shots. I shoot my shot. My shots. At the ladies. Is there a double standard in society of how we take the quote unquote negative things when it's a woman? Versus when it's a man. Hmm? Let's think about that. What am I talking about? Jay, what are you talking about? I was watching an interview the other day. And a young lady was talking about objectification of women. How bad objectification of women. He said, what is objectification? You just talk about her body and that's all she's worth. And da, 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 da. So the interview asked the chick. So say, for instance, when you meet a man, say, for instance, two guys, are you looking for the guy that physically meets what you're attracted to or not? And she's like, of course, I want the guy I'm physically attracted to. He's like, is that objectification, though? To which she did the wide eyed look of realization that, oh, actually is women objectify men just as much if not more than dudes do but let's talk about it y'all agree or disagree do women objectify just as much but in society we're just made to say that that's predominantly a man illness sickness disease that is usually men or do y'all objectify just as much as we do? And it just looked that different. I remember another show some years ago. It was um, a talk show. And they had uh, the host. She was carried in, you know, by, you know, they had her on this thing. And it was, I don't know, six, eight men carrying her in. If that was six to eight women carrying schemes... <laughs> Would we say that that is toxic masculinity? Absolutely. That's a part of the patriarchy. What's the difference? Why do we have this skewed vision between men and women? Skeens, what do you think, my brother? Well, unfortunately, it's sexy to say that the man is the man's problem. Mm-hmm. It's it, that that's the lens that is is seen as that you know we're all, all called dogs. Mm-hmm. But that objectification is is just as prevalent when when women do, as we talk about reality TV. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Let's talk about that. The objectification when you uh, when you watch a music video, we talk about how women are objectified and why they have these women in in these different videos wearing nothing. Mm-hmm. And as we talk about, 
No one made them go get in this video. Right. They had the option to say, no, I, I'll pass. Some of them auditioned, waited in line to audition for the role. Absolutely. But then we talk of objectification. When LL has no shirt off, <laughs> uh, with no shirt on, <laughs> licking his lips, I can love you better. What is you, why did you women watch the video so many times? It what, was it really because of the song? Mm. Or was it for the visual aid? KC and JoJo, no sh shirtless. Even though his chest was on bird. Flight. Chest was on bird. His, his chest was like, like sheetrock. <laughs> uh, what about H-Town? Okay. Shirt off. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent. 50 Flexing Cent. Flexing the muscles. Nelly. The Rock. So when, when you hooping and hollering for their physique, that is also justification. That's, that's also Objectif object objectification. Yep. So, and then we talk about reality TV. Reality TV is, as we were talking about, is the new video vixen. And when you ask why, mm -hmm. because that is still objectification of our culture. Absolutely. And it's also being ran by who? Mona Scott Young. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. A woman. <laughs> the women won. <laughs> but yeah, it's, that, those different people are being objectified by a woman, and she's objectifying both male, male and female. Mm -hmm. But the people that she's objectifying is who? Mm -hmm. Us. Yes. So that means you have to also take account for your part in in the role of the objectification. But you can also say that that is just human nature to be a visual person, and you your attraction, the first your first initial. Introduction to a person is the visual. What you see. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's one of the uh, our biggest things. I think, it, and it's cool to be honest about that. And now, is there a part where again objectification is true? If you're a dude or a chick, and you are so consumed by the visuals of a thing. I got it. You know what I'm saying? I understand. If you're one of those dudes and schemes, we've had homeboys that's like that, where they are always just over the top talking only about visually what they see in women and, oh, she had this and she. There's a line there where you're like, man, slow down. You know what I'm saying? Fall back a little bit. Um, but to say that I initially met you and I was attracted to what I saw, I mean, okay, that's yeah. cool. That's human nature. Because That's if you nature. wasn't, and because you wasn't attracted to what you saw, how many times, how many people would actually be willing to give that person an opportunity to learn that person and say, "Hey, you know what? I'm actually attracted to that person's mind." Mm -hmm. If that person is not visual pleasing, mm -hmm. visually or ple or pleasing to you when you first see them, mm -hmm. chances are that you're not going to take the time to uh, right. to look outside of that at, that exterior. Right, and I, I know there's some women. I'm with someone right now, and I'm not. You know, they aren't the finest. I'm not saying that, again, talk, uh, you know, we had a rule way back. We're looking for sevens with cute, cute figure. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't saying that you got to be a 10, you know what I'm saying, when I'm but like that. But I, I do understand that there's some level in one way or another, I had to be attracted to something about you initially for it to go further. And that's cool. That's cool. Women do it. Men do it. I just want women to admit that they also do it. Which leads to preference. Boom. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's no different than, again, talking about the double standards. <clears throat> and we may have talked about this before, but one of my OGs, he always tell me that the difference It's funny how the standards are different for men and women. A dude can pull up to the McDonald's, to that drive through and he can see a chick there. And you be telling this story, man. I met, I pulled up to uh, the McDonald's there off of Fort Hood Road, and there she was handing me, you know, my Big Mac and nuggets. And it would be this wonderful story. But generally speaking, a woman, if you flip the coin the other way, she is not gonna find. Well, you just had B. Simone <laughs> talking about. Oh, the nine to five situation. The, she yeah. can't date a guy with a, that that has a regular nine to five. Right. Yep. Because when where you're saying that you, in the, in in the in the terms of finance you're not equally yoked, right? You're saying that he you can't be with a regular guy because he doesn't get he's not seeing your grind. But really, I mean, she does have talent, 
Right. From, but uh, there's a lot of women who just got just so happened got lucky with being a reality. You well, you became an Instagram model because of your look. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really a talent based thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Your looks, your looks did it. Mm-hmm. Your lyrics didn't. Yeah. Okay. So you don't really have hey, it. Line, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Even you can say somewhat Kardashian, right? Not really a talent. You right. have a look. Now right. the business portion, right, plays just as much a, a part of your success as your as your talent, which mm-hmm. is your exterior. Okay, but to have the whole that 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 same uh have have people that same regard of you you got to meet me and match me. Okay, what if you get in an accident? Your, your looks fade away. What else you got? As you get older, those looks do change. Looks are dimin- diminishing returns. On what head. else do you have? Mm-hmm. That's, brand, that's, a, that's, a, that's a Bentley with no transmission. Right, exactly. Looks, it looks is like a car. You literally, you drive, as soon as you drive it a lot, it starts to diminish and depreciate. You see what, what I'm saying? What else do you have? What else you got going on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, um, we saw something intriguing you brought up, you know, and we were talking about me and schemes were having a, a discussion about uh objectification but also exploitation of the culture and our people and for you know varying levels of the bag we're willing to put ourselves in these compromising situations i.e love and hip-hop and in this case uh we were looking at a, a, a snippet of an episode from uh marriage boot camp and uh it has this uh, gentleman uh is Willie that was a part of day 26 from making the band. Mm-hmm. He's from Chicago, I think. Yeah. You know, uh, I know he has some ties to Kells, I believe, even Avant, I believe, something to that nature at some point. But anyway, um, in the scene that they were showing, his wife was talking about another young lady. She wasn't there, but her significant, I don't know if that's, Hazel's I guess they fiance don't know, don't something. Like, I think it's fiance. Yeah, whatever there. So the fiance's in earshot of the kitchen and he hears her talking about that his, you know, Hazel is extra and this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. So she's not there, so he responds. And so she's oh da da it, it this turns into something. And then her husband Willie was like, Well, don't talk to her, talk to me. Mm-hmm. Right? And and the guy, more of anything, the guy was just trying to like dead the situation right she said like, she's being extra everything her, her dance he's like no she, like she just vibing to no but i think she's extra with everything she do mm-hmm. so the brother as the man you know that's your significant other you're not gonna just allow people just to talk about your your mate that way no and then willie being her husband had to chime in and say don't talk to my wife because the battery has instantly been put in his back so she's put him in, and, and we talked about, she created a ripple effect mm-hmm. within that situation. She's talking about this man's woman to a group of people. One, I really, I can't mess with you all as a group when you're openly talking about somebody behind their back that you're not willing to say to them, they, to say, say to their face. One, right. That's my first thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Willie being the male, being her being her man, and, and could have been a peacemaker as the other guy did because he said, Hey, that's just what you, that's just a vibe. He's like just trying to shut it down. Mm-hmm. She could have easily said, you know what, I get it. That's her thing. Cool. Mm-hmm. But she's rambling on, no, this is my thing, that's what I feel and you're being extra. So now when the guy is defending his woman, Willie's saying, Hey, don't talk to my wife, talk to me. But Willie could have also stepped in and bigger, been a bigger person. Babe, all right, that's enough. Don't Yo, talk about that. it yep. because this man feels offended. Yep. You, you can't tell the person how, uh, in terms of when they when they are being offended how they should feel. Right. As well as you also have to put yourself in that man's position if he was talking about your woman, or if, she, if his wife was talking, or or whatever the the, the situation is. Right. If Hazel was talking about your woman. Right. She that was same what yep. you're gonna stand up for your woman as well. So he could have as easily, you should. Yeah, as you should. Mm-hmm. So she he could have easily said, Hey babe, hey, hey, calm down. We cool. And then them as men could have talked. Right. But because of that battery that she put in his back, him as being her 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 male patriarch, however you want to talk, uh categorize it, he now has to stand up. Whether he wants to or not, he has to defend her honor. 
because I can't let you talk to my wife that way. Right. But also you look at the other side when this man now also has to stand up for his wife, his woman. Absolutely. Because if yep. he didn't say anything and it got back to Hazel, what would she say? There you go. Right, right. Exactly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. You're going to just let people talk about me behind yep. behind my back and you're there to, to listen and you didn't say anything? Yep. You didn't come to my defense? Now, They, if he didn't say anything, that also will now create a trust issue within their relationship. Right. So now... Anything that go on, she can bring that back up and throw it back in. Oh, I can't trust you because you ain't got my back and so on and so forth. But that energy that she brung caused those guys to fight. Which, again, the exploitation piece turns into wonderful, great TV. Yes, it does. With two men of color on the TV boxing over something that's really, you know. Now, let me ask you, Skeens, is there a time or what is the time? When a dude does have the green light to go and holler at a dude about how he's approached his chick or something of that nature. Well, there, yeah, and, and, and everything is about respect. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as I stated, the guy said respectfully, hey, yo, hey, he didn't come at her while he said, hey, right. that's just her vibe. She's right. just doing her thing. Right. She could have took that and mm -hmm. they could have moved on, but because of that, I got to have the last word syndrome that a lot of us have. Mm -hmm. It escalated. Right. And Willie, as a man, could have said, hey, baby, I, hey, calm down. Now, me, us as men, now we can engage. Right. Right. We can agree to disagree as long as it's done peacefully. Right. We can coexist. Shaq and Kobe coexist in one championships. Mm -hmm. I don't have to like you to right. deal with, to, to, yep. to coexist. We're not all, everybody at your job is not best friends. No, shouldn't be. When I leave job, I love them, but when I leave work, when I clock out, I forgot everybody. Right. And I think sometimes uh, I have I was in a similar situation years ago where a dude initiated the conversation with my, you know, he was talking. That's a to, different thing. And she's like, yo, and I said, oh, hold on. I have his number. Let me hit him, you mm -hmm. know. And we had, you know, with no rah, you know, but just like, hey, man. When you got something like that, man, just holler at me first. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, and and I'm gonna be the person to disseminate but, that. But also, me. you wasn't there. Yeah, no. See, that's I wasn't. The, see, yeah. that, 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 that's the biggest part of it. When we when we you know connect the dots, right? It's a difference between when they had that going on. You wasn't there to be the mediator. No. Mm -hmm. As well as you can step in at that moment yep. and say, "Hey, bro, hey, let's talk, man. You build or however we want we yep. want to handle this." Yep. Let's knock let's let's set these boundaries right now and, and get it understood. Mm -hmm. And babe, shut up. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't talk to him while we're talking. Right. Right. Because even when when the guys were going back and forth, okay, you're Will is telling the guy to talk to me, mm -hmm. but yet and still your woman's still talking to him. Mm -hmm. So now this guy is also he's in a he's in a defensive position right now because he's not gonna back down. Well, he he don't he would look weak to back down when you when he, you tell Willis him talk to me. Don't talk to my wife. Okay, I am talking to you, but your wife is still chiming in. So I now have you, your wife, bat, uh, putting that battery in your back. She talking crazy to me. She telling you, telling me what you gonna do to me. Right. And why? So now that guy's on. What? What is my position? Mm -hmm. Like I, you now, you you got me in a position that I know that I got to defend myself. Not right. all. Not only do I defend. My mate that's not here. Right. I got to be ready for whatever's going to go, whatever's going to gonna take place. Mm -hmm. But that energy that she displayed initially could have been dead when the guy tried to peacefully. Right. He, yeah, I said, yeah, he yeah. didn't rah, he didn't yeah. rah, rah. He didn't come in there cursing him out. He's like, hey, that's, that's it. They could have taken it. She could have took it and said, okay, I got it. Understood. Willie could have stayed, stepped in and said, hey, babe, I got this. Let's me and you talk. And then, hey, bro. Hey, I don't appreciate your woman like talking about my woman when like that went uh, uh, vice versa. What if it right. would, and as a man, you say, Hey, you know, I get it. I understand, understand appreciate yep. you. Yep. I'll handle that. Yep. Hey, or there's no disrespect. Hi, every that that conversation was to happen. But now that energy that that she amplified by constantly talking. Right. And and like you said, it has a trickle down effect. Exactly. And one of the and let's spin it this way, Skeen, is in our community, we don't understand how our actions mm -hmm. against each other like that 
it has a trickle down effect. There's there's consequences and repercussions for these actions. And when we make and what this is, is one of the things that we always talk about is when you put people in a situation that are making emotional decisions. Mm -hmm. there, that, that was all emotion. Yeah. Oh. It was all it was all and, emotion. And no, there was no calmer head. A cooler head. Mm -hmm. There was even the people that were sitting there listening. None of them even stepped in and said, "Hey, y'all, chill." Right. Everybody just sitting there in, 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 in a, as an audience member, as the people that watch the show. But right. y'all are there to be able to step in, and it doesn't tie in, but it does. Mm -hmm. For the same people that look, and it's not the same, but it's kind of the same scale for when the people doing the George Floyd situation, all the other cops that stood there and right, watched. Right. 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 Yep. It's, lo it's a lesser scale. No one died. I understand that. But it's still you in position to be able to shut something down and right the wrongs before the wrongs become detrimental. Because as, as I say, state that, what if they're in the streets? Mm -hmm. That energy can lead to street violence. Right. Absolutely. Because in the streets, in Willie's from Chicago, we see yeah, all the yeah. deaths. Yeah. The guy, one of the uh, rappers just died and people were freestyling and, and, they got diss tracks about the guy that just died after right. he died. Right. Yeah. So if you take that that kind of tra action into the streets of, I'm putting a battery in this person back. Now this person kills somebody. As we talked about, you know, he kills somebody. Now that person's gone. I'm locked up. You dating somebody else. Yeah. But yeah. part of gang culture or street, you know, street justice is. Some of your homies won't get back. Yep. So now there's a trickle down effect of somebody else got to got to suffer because I suffered. Right. So as we look at it on a on a minor scale on a TV show, yes, that it, it, yeah, no one died. But if you, we take it to the streets and understanding yep. it's how the, the same streets type move. Of behavior. It leads to extra. It, it leads to not one person dying. It, le it becomes a generational trauma because now those kids don't have their father or mother. Right. That kid may not, may, may not be in the system or being mistreated by the system when they're in, in foster care. Right. As oh. we see a lot of lot of situations. Or the mother is with a guy that's, that's molesting his, uh, his or her daughter. Right. And or beating the kids or treating them wrong. Now that kid has to deal with that trauma. Mom can't do anything if the guy, if if, if she with another street dude that's that's paying all the bills, she living off drug money. Yeah. So we gotta understand that with every move, with every situation, there are consequences. We gotta take that emotional uh, outburst out the way because in the real world, when you come when you come with that kind of energy, and there's no one willing to step up and be a mediator or be the bigger person, mm -hmm. and did it. It leads to violence, be at, at at a measure that we can't that we wouldn't be able to comprehend. A la Chicago, and I'm just I'm not just yeah, yeah, just yeah, picking yeah. on Chicago, but it's real numbers. Yep. As and they had 102 people got killed one weekend, or got shot that we, one weekend, but not just there. There's a hood. Every city got a hood. Yep. And that type of tra that type of interaction happens in every city. How do we combat? How do we combat that? Yeah. Who's going to be the bigger person to say, "Hey, let me shut this down," instead and and instead of looking at it as a sign of weakness to to to, to bag back and you know not saying coward being a coward or cowering down to someone, but being the bigger person to say, "Hey, let me shut this down," and, and because I know where it can go. Mm -hmm. Right. It gets it, it it goes to a place that a lot of people are not willing to go. And a lot of people go get go to those positions and play those games that you don't want to play, but now you're in a position that you have to do it, mm -hmm. and you will never be able to get back that moment once you once you partake in that moment. Right, and that's the reason why we try our best in the move in a way where we don't move emotionally. And I know you're saying, "Hey, this was in a reality show; it's scripted." It, it, but while it is. This is a real life behavior in real life interactions that we see every day and we hear about every day. And as Skeens is talking about that trickle down effect, once you if you looked at it that way, a when you're looking at we, we have to grow to be people, like he said, that are in a position where we're deading foolishness. You know what I'm saying? It's a false it's a false show of manhood. To go around and say that, you know, I'm just punching cats in the face and all this kind of stuff. But they talk to me a certain way. We got to have people that 
and have to have the free exchange between each other where we can sit down and build. You know what I'm saying? I've sat down with cats that I had an issue with and it's like, hey, man, let's break. Let's that's that's a real you know what I'm saying, Mark? It's nothing like sitting down with another man and actually breaking bread with him. Because oftentimes we don't think about it, but when you sit down to have a meal with people, there's a thing within us where it's usually when you're going to have food, you're in a diffused state. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That The mere fact that I'm going to put sustenance in my body and share a table with you and share quote unquote bread with you, I'm in a diffused state and I'm in a place to listen. So that's real where you, man, let's... Man, let's go grab some man, let's go grab some Chick-fil-A. Let's go grab a burger. Let's go grab a sandwich. And you sit there and look that other that man or woman in the eye and actually tap into who they are here on a real level and not just on an emotional rah-rah in the moment type of level. That's kind of stuff that's gonna be key in us as a community, getting to where we need to be and deading some of those things that we're seeing in the Chicago's and the, some of the other bigger cities and stuff like that. We have to get to that position. I mean, we have it here. It's, you know, people get shot at the club over some reckless, some over the business. reckless, stupid stuff. My, my new guy, my new guy shot my ex because I don't like my ex. Yeah. Type of there stuff. was a situation years ago here, Mario, where it was two dudes grew up together. One was dating this chick. Chick got in between them. Other dude starts dating this chick. Club parking lot, he pulls out either the gauge, shoots, calls the mom that is like his mama. Like, hey, I just shot so and so. Emotional. Emotional. And like you said, what is the trickle down effect to the chick, to the kids involved, to the mothers, the fathers, the friend? You know what I'm saying? The, the trickle effect can go on. And some of those, uh, you know, again, some of that PTSD that people have. Like you said, like you be saying, everybody in the hood got PTSD. Absolutely. <laughs> everybody got it. Everybody got it. Everybody need counseling. Yep. Just depending on how how you deal right. with it. Yep. And Absolutely. That even, and even the ones that you think deal with the best are suppressing it. And, and they may be the biggest ticket time bomb. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we wanted to talk about that real quick with y'all, man. It's just. Again, watching how we move, not letting people, uh, you know, we started off talking about um, objectification, but really the conversation is, you know, are we are we exploiting ourselves for monetary gain that's not going to really be lasting? What 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 type of exchange are we really making for, for lack of a better term, letting somebody pimp us out? And then we're willingly doing this thing, willingly exploiting ourselves, willingly exploiting our culture. Also, uh, how many of those people, or, or us in general, just in general, after having that that meaningless transaction, mm -hmm. but for that money, that that momentary monetary gain, yep. years later, you now have to think about what you did or have to now explain yourself to your kids mm -hmm. when mom, mommy or daddy did these things, right, because yeah. once it's out or it's on the in, on, online and the internet or, or out, out in the public, mm -hmm. it never goes away. Yep. The cloud lives forever. Yes. So now when those different things come back out, you now have to be able to be, how, be able to explain Well, grandma was this mm -hmm. granddaddy was, was it mm -hmm. because now that those kids gonna look at you in a different light. And now you actually have to be able to explain yourself, but also those kids gonna look at you as a hypocrite a lot of times. Right? How do you, how are you gonna tell me to, to live right and do this, and and I'm watching you, even though it may be thirty years ago, out here acting a fool. Right. So the question we gotta ask ourselves: What are our values? What are our core values? What are our morals? You know, what are we willing to do for the bag? What are we willing to do for it? Oftentimes now, I mean, it's almost like anything. <laughs> yeah. Really? But I have to, do I see more value, again, in what's in my pocket or in the investment in the relationship that I have with my brothers and sisters that are out here? We have to have value in one another. And we have to see value within ourselves. 
to know that we can get it other ways without putting our people in this type of light like this. Because this this loving hip hop, these marriage boot camps and all this kind of stuff. Let's ask ourselves, what is the infatuation that we have with reality TV? I was and I I ain't sitting here standing on my, you know, I, I was a big reality. Yep, absolutely. But me and Skeens again had a conversation about the type of things of where we wanted to be as men. And then we had to think about what were we consuming? That energy that you, that you, that you digest is real. I mean, ment- mental clarity was complete, was at an all time high. We used to stop, live stop on watching. world star. Yeah. Stop watching that stuff. <laughs> we used to live on a uh, media takeout. You know what I'm saying? Now we want to, you know, we're guys that want to be, you know, we're of this culture. We want to know what's going on, current event kind of stuff like that. But, I mean, we had to, it was funny that he and I both got to this place kind of like at the same time. We're like, dude, you know, I don't go on them joints like I used to, man, because it was nothing positive on there, man. It's no, no positive. And, and as we talk about that, like for love, hip, love and hip hop, basketball, wife, whatever. Yep. What, as, as we look at those different relationships, right? Mm-hmm. What was the impact of any of those relationships in a positive manner? Right. Mm-hmm. These people have been a lot of these people have been on these shows for years, season right. after season. Right. What positive impact did those shows make on their life? Right. Mm-hmm. Other than the financial gain. Right. Yep. Did you, were they, are they in a better relationship with their their spouse? Yep. A lot of them most don't of them see know. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's are, a handful that's still together and they're cool, but you got to understand that. If the script is for you to have drama, you, you know what I'm saying? It's, they're telling you what it is. They're saying that we can't sell this and make this great if y'all doing great. It's basically going to the casino. The house will always win. Come on now. Absolutely. That's all it is. Yep. It's a fixed fight. Because if those di- these different shows were there for our betterment, you would see some, fo- some, some form of tangible improvements. Right. And quality of life improvement, and and that basically it would radiate to others. They say, "Hey, man, they got a great relationship. I can, hey, they did this, they flipped that. Man, I, we can do that. We can. I can see myself in that person and say, "Hey, if that person can 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 uh, overcome these situations in their relationship or life, or whatever, and they're com- they're making it uh, making a better, uh, they're in a better position, or with a relationship with their family member. You may not have take talked to your pop, your pops or your mom or whatever, but." You saw the maturation and the journey that those people were on to become a better person. I want that, and I can see myself. I can envision myself being that kind of person or having that kind of that kind of outcome. We don't see it. Name. I would love to see people give me examples of not just one, not an outlier, mm-hmm. but consistent mm-hmm. change that those people have made in their life. Oh, let's talk about this. You know, we like thirty, and we, we 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 ain't gonna be before you long, y'all. But um. On Netflix, y'all, uh, they start. They have the old episodes of Moesha, and my son, you know, uh, we've been watching them almost every night. And he's like, "Man, okay, Daddy, this was a cool show." And I, you know, I, I want him to see shows with predominantly black casts and to see them in a positive light. Da 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 da. But me and Skeens were talking. So Moesha, although her mother had died, they showed a dynamic where she was dealing with her stepmother. They show her as um, extremely bright, smart, but still mischievous, getting into things, you know, regular teen things. And they show this family dynamic where they're working through that, right? And I was telling Skeens, I said, what is the predominant positive black family that's on TV today? I had to think very hard about it. And I'm still thinking. I didn't Google it, y'all. I'm just going off what's in my mind right now. What what show is a positive, predominantly black family in 2020? And the closest thing we got is blackish. And as a joke, I said blackish. And, and, and it's the ish. That, 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 that's <laughs> right. the thing that. I said blackish. Depending on how, a joke. You, how you view that, that, that family dynamics. I, I'm really I'm still racking my brain and I'm when I for me guys what I'm looking for is mother, father, married, you know, kids and uh positive dialect. Because even like with the Moesha joint when the first episode when with D yeah. as being the stepmom. Right. 
Moesha had to find her boundaries. Yes. Yep. And, she was going and, through that. Yep. and also D having to be understanding that, hey, that she did lose her mother and I'm not here to replace her mother. I'm right. here as a help. Yep. And to actually be able to express that to the kid and not just not just say it, yep. show it within love. Right. Constant and be uh, be consistent with consistency. Yes, sir. Being that, but also show that the dynamics of the father and the and D trying to balance their relationship, also being on one accord when it comes to how we're going to raise the kids, how we're going to discipline them, not mm-hmm. not wanting the not allowing the kids to pit one side against the other. You, you uh, United Front. So it was a lot. It's a lot of different lot dynamics of within there. every household that a lot of people face. But we want actual positive res- representation, mm-hmm. as well as some. Sometimes some people may not under- not have a way or not know a method of expressing it within their own household. Mm-hmm. You may need a model of a possibility mm-hmm. of how it's supposed to. Well, it's not not the correct way. I mean, as, as basically an example of how to do it, and yep. then from there you can become creative and and do it your way. Yeah, yeah. yeah put your own positive spin on it. But we don't really have a lot of those representations now, mm-hmm. if any. Mm-hmm. Yep. We have love and hip hop. Yep, probably on now, <laughs> right now, right. So, just food for thought, guys. Um, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something, but I'm saying that it's so few and far between now that we're sitting here having to rack our brain. I just thought about it, huh? Black lightning. Black lightning. Okay, that's. I, 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 I haven't only, watched Black I've Lightning. I've only watched like two episodes, I but the Black guy, Lightning. I think he's like a teacher and he has the two daughters okay. and then the mother. Well, yeah. Black That's Lightning, close, I, gi- I close, give you the salute. But the mother and father is not living together. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm, thro- <laughs> I'm throwing Hail Marys. Uh, well, you jog my memory because I wasn't thinking Netflix and stuff, but they did have the uh, the little boy Dion. His dad was like, you was know, that, it was Michael B. Jordan, something he, happened to him, but through, yeah, yeah, you know, so, so we're talking about a, a, a actual I want to get a full fledged family dynamic mom, dad, kids, dog, whatever you you know what I'm saying. I'm just where is it at? Where is that example? relationship and the, the, the give and take of how everyone yeah. plays their part for the you, betterment, yeah. You know, me, I even love that you know, uh, you know, the kids are making reference to hearing. D and the dad, you know, I heard y'all the other night, or you know, he's coming up, you know, all those type of positive things. Even that, that you he's need flirting to see. with his, hey, like he's flirting look, positive with positive reinforcement. Absolutely. Yeah. Where's that at? Where do we have that today? Just food for thought. But uh, again, we thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this is how did we get here? I'm your host Jay Carter, my man Skeens. Um, so we'll catch y'all on the next time. Y'all be good.